Welcome to Tuesday's Tips from Sew Very Easy. My name is Laura. And have you ever wondered if you could sew a grandmother's flower garden, which is the hexagon block by machine? Well, yes, you can. Now there's a product out there that will actually help you either hand or machine stitch the hexagons. And what it will do is it sort of sets that quarter inch seam for you so you don't have to draw or mark your quarter inch seam allowances. It's called Stitch Fast and it looks like heavy paper when you bring it out and your hexagons are already printed on them. What you need to do is just cut them out and then in the back you will be able to take off the paper and that has got a sticky surface on it that you can place on the back side of your fabrics and it just sticks. You will be able to position this anywhere you want, so if you want a fussy cut, you can. The next thing will be trimming this out, but you're going to trim out a quarter inch all the way around. There are a lot of rulers that have quarter inch marks on them. You can even get a ruler called add a quarter, and it has a lip, and that lip will actually run against the paper. And you're going to be able to just cut the extra fabric off and you'll go all the way around until you get a beautiful hexagon with a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Now you can cut these one at a time or you could put them in a stack and cut them in advance. The next will be just bringing them to the machine to sew them. You do not need to do any marks. The paper will be your mark. The first thing I like to do is set up the machine so it has a smaller stitch length. If your machine does a 2.5, I like to go 2, and that way the stitches are nice and tiny. The next, I like to start with the center of my flower, and that is the one that's going to have the paper. Put right sides together, matching up all of the edges. And start by putting your needle right in that corner. And you're going to be able to stitch following the edge of the paper. You do not need to follow the quarter inch here. You're going to be following that paper edge. Do two or three stitches, go back two or three stitches, and then come forward following that line getting to this point. When you get to this point, go back a couple of stitches, take your fabric out. Now if you have a machine that will knot for you, feel free to use the knotting option. So you have no stitching into the other side. The next will be adding the next piece onto the center piece, and this is the piece that has the paper. So you'll match up right sides, and you're going to want to start stitching right there again. You're following the paper, not the seam allowance. And when you get close to this end, you're going to be able to just take the previous fabric and just move it out of the way and stop again right in that mark. Back stitch and take it out. You now have three of the pieces joined together and none of the seams have been crossed over. You'll be able to go and do the next edge and follow all of the edges and put all your six pieces on. Five have been sewn on and now we need to do the last one. And to match up the last seam, take the two and just move them out of the way and make sure that it's nice and tight against your last stitching line. And you can pin that if you're more comfortable. It's going to be easier to see when you match up the next piece. So now when I go to match up the seams, I have the three sides that I'm able to match up. So I have the two pieces folded away, my block is matched, and I'm able to start and stop just as I've been doing all the way along. And I won't have to worry about the piece behind getting in the way because I've already pushed it out of the way. And when that last one's been stitched on, you will have all six stitched all the way around. You're no longer going to need the paper in the center. You're going to transfer that paper to one of the sides. 
you'll be able to use your stitching line as one guide and the rest you'll be able to see that it's straight. Now I'm going to be able to take two sides, one with the paper and the one that is beside it, fold it so all of the edges match and all of the other edges are going to just be out of the way naturally by the way it falls. You can see that that piece is already out of your way and what you're going to do is start right in that stitch and stitch down to that corner. When this side is done, you'll be able to use the other side of the paper and match up the next hexagon. So you'll be able to use this paper for two sides. So now you have the two sides done. Now you can either just set paper on every other one or just move this to the next block. The paper can be used many times, so you're going to be able to get a lot of use out of it. And when the last two seams are sewn, the grandmother's flower garden is done. And I only used that one paper. And when the seams are all pressed, no one will know you've done it on the machine. And all of the seams are perfectly flat. Now you're going to be able to just continuously add to these. Even if you wanted to do a larger one and go all the way around, the system is the same. You put the paper stuck onto the back and follow the paper edges. You do not need to follow the quarter inch seam, just the paper edge. And just like we do a traditional one, we make a whole stack of these and then we sew them all together. Now you can get these hexagons already pre-printed in many different sizes and you can get other shapes also. Another thing is you can buy the paper just blank if you want to draw your own. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. And thank you for joining me today on Tuesday's Tips from Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.